Um, so what are we trying to change? We're trying to change a little bit of your percep perception, right? So we want you to look at things from a little bit different perspective than what is considered mainstream or what the media is kind of prescribing or throwing in your face. We want to look. We want you to look a little bit different direction from what your the healthcare system will tell you is the right way to do things. All right. So depending on your level of comfort. Um, if you are this bird, it's facing the other direction uh, amongst your coworkers and friends and things like that, um, you may be comfortable with guiding or trying to change the way the flock is looking, but you may not. Um, but if you can do that, you, you'll, soon, you'll soon start to notice that the bird next to you turns around, the bird next to you turns around, or like the bird, like two guys down is like, hey, what are you guys doing? You know, or then, or your coworkers sitting like, why the hell are you eating this all the time? Your food looks really good that you're making for lunch. Those type, types of conversations start to happen and then we have a bigger impact. All right, so the idea behind, this is great that you guys will do this, but my goals for why we're all here is to spread this kind of culture, right? All right. Um, Black Box is just, I think CrossFit's one of the best communities that have introduced, that has kind of like really incepted this perception of do something for a little while if it works for you, if it makes good changes, keep it. If you don't like it, get rid of it. It didn't work, right? We kind of like get rid of all the bullshit and the published um, articles and this guy saying this thing and this guy saying smoking is good for you and this guy saying smoking will kill you. Like that we get out of that mainstream stuff, we self-experiment, okay? So think of this as a 45 day self-experiment. Self See what you can do to yourself in 45 days. And if you join this challenge, commit to yourself for those 45 days to make that change. 45 days is not a long period of time, a, a long stretch of time, if you can figure out how to fuel yourself the rest of your life. This is just a learning process. So if you commit that 45 days to yourself, adjust it, you will and paint yourself into a corner, you will figure this out, and it will change you for the rest of your life. Um, other concept, primal instinct, right? Brain developed over the course of time. Um, I don't want to get into religion here, but uh, right, right, well, this lower region down here where your, your brainstem is and where all the primal instincts and urges come from, this is, this is what we're talking about trying to control. We're trying to control the impulsive nature of humans in the way that media and fast food and the fucking assholes at Doritos are <laughs> trying to take advantage of that. And we're trying to get this little guy in the front that developed later in life that says, oh man, those chips aren't good for me, or that cake, I didn't, I wanted to say no before I ate the whole thing. We want to get that guy thinking a little bit more, right? So um, what the, what these different asshole industries are doing, like Cokes and the Doritos and those types of things are specifically designed to make you eat more of their product and so you spend more on it, right? It doesn't say you, it doesn't fill you up, it appeals to that crazy little man that's like, oh man, sugar fuel, good, I gotta eat it, I, I don't know when I'm, that, that little guy back there that says, I don't know when I might get my next meal, is still there, we haven't buried him. That's why you can like black out and eat a whole cake. Right? He takes control, and he takes control and he's driving. So we're trying to get out of, why is this thing down? Um, we're trying to stop that guy from driving and drive with our heads. Uh, CrossFit also has this other concept, right? It's the health continuum. So we kind of estimate that the American majority or the, the culture that we're trying to change kind of sits in here somewhere between sick and well, right? And that's, that's your, your folks on diabetic medication, your folks on blood pressure medication, the folks that don't think they have diabetes, don't think they have high blood pressure because they're taking medication, right? Beth has stories like that all the time for her, from her patients. I don't have diabetes. Well, why do you take this diabetes medication? Well, I don't have it because I take the pill. Right? So that's, that's, where, that's where we're living. That's the, that's the fucked up mentality of society or what people let society make them believe. So they're teetering right here, right? And then something else happens in their life and then all of a sudden they're sick. Right? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get to well by behaving right. And then we're trying to get beyond that to fit what people would consider, and this is why we say elite fitness, right? We're trying to achieve a level of fitness that gets us well beyond well 
so that if something does happen, it takes us a lot longer to get all the way back to sync. All right? So simple concepts, right? All right, and then the other thing is that the, this challenge is designed. You have to check your stuff every single day, but you need to behave like the person you want to become, right? So we are, everybody's got these goals, right? I want to have great performance. I want to have um, flat abs. I want to lose 15 pounds, whatever it is. You have these end goals, but the real key is figuring out what behaviors you need to take every day to, in order to achieve those goals. And that's the way this program is designed, right? Okay, why are we doing this? The biggest reason, I know everybody wants to look sexy naked. The biggest reason that we are doing these behaviors is to silence things like chronic inflammation, right? We're here for long-term health, right? Everybody wants to come in here and deadlift a lot of weight and look sweaty on the floor and everything, and that for those for that short period of time, but why do we focus on quality movement? Because we care about what happens out there. Why do we focus on quality behavior for this challenge? Because we have we care about what happens for the rest of your life. So that's what this challenge is designed to help you understand and, and achieve. When you, when you change your behaviors, when you get really in tune with your body and what you're putting in your body and your sleep habits and your hydration habits, when you get in tune with that, you start to see these very um, short-term or, uh, what's not chronic? What, yeah, short-term. Acute. Acute, yes, nice thing. <laughs> You see these acute symptoms, right? You start to feel them. You become more in tune with them. Man, my, my joints are aching today. Um, I'm short of breath for some reason in a workout. Well, shit, I had a bunch of pizza and beer on Saturday, and Monday I can't quite breathe right. Right? Um, diarrhea, that's an easy one. Weight gain, obesity, dry eyes, stiffness, right? Your squat's a little bit tight, right? You can't get all the way down to the bottom of the squat for some reason. Well, were you eating like shit for a while? These are, these are inflammation markers, things that are happening in your body where your body is fighting against that because of what you did to it, right? And those are short term, those are acute. <laughs> the acute stuff piles up over time, right? So think of this, so info, silent inflammation is the stuff that we can't really see or we just, we feel it like, and we kind of shrug it off, we'll get rid of it later, I'm gonna take some Advil or I'm gonna cure the dog that bit me and have a, a Bloody Mary, right? <laughs> so those are the things that we do to get rid of this acute stuff. Well, so what if you had an acute injury? So consider this as an acute injury, right? I snap my finger right now, right? And then I trip over this cord and I twist my ankle. And then tomorrow I pick something up stupidly and then I slip a disc in my back. And then I snatch with a uh, internally rotated shoulder and my shoulder is, but by the end of the week, I'm all jacked up, right? And it's compiling. And but those, all those injuries, maybe if I you know, broke my finger or jammed my finger, I can still squat and do a bunch of different things and be out there going to work and all that stuff. But if I got a back and a shoulder and a finger and an ankle, I can't drive my car, I can't go to work. These things that are happening silently, internally, these acute things pile up over time. And your body can't compete against all those things that you're doing to it. So free radicals build up. Whatever is causing, I guess that would be what's causing cancer, whatever's causing, um, and, uh, Alzheimer's, whatever is causing, you know, the depression, the clock. Heart, neurological diseases, uh, cognitive, or what do you call it, what's the heart one? Cardiovascular, Cardiovascular disease, but all these things that they're starting to link this silent inflammation to, they, the, the things that your body normally clean, cleans up if you were treating it the right way, start to pile up and then you won't be old, you're 45 years old and you can't remember your name, right? So, kind of a, turns into a serious thing later, but if we do a little bit now, we can curb that. And for me, like for the most part, and I, I, I'm telling you, like, I don't come from a background of like great clean eating family and everything like that. I've, I've battled the same thing. All growing up, my dad type two diabetes. My sister's got this like pancreas thing going on where she's constantly in the hospital. Diet predicated, right? So I grew up, they're still eating like I used to eat. When I started to figure this shit out, that changed everything, and all it was was a learning process. I just had to back myself into a corner and figure it out. All right, so that's all it is. You have, what you'll find too is you have to say no to some of the things that impact your life in negative ways. So people, we will have people in here. So one of the rules in here is that your electrons are off by 9:30. You're in bed by 10, right? Or you lose points. Well, my job doesn't really let me do that. I don't care. You can You cannot. You cannot. Because your job or a social impact 
it doesn't change the way the sun works and the way that your body behaves according to light and dark, right? You either choose to do that or you tell the people that are above you or that are impacting that, no, this is the way I'm choosing to live my life, you figure it out, right? That's, that, that's the conversion that you have to make, that's the jump that you have to make. Okay, and then I guess the, back to that di diabetic point, healthcare versus sick care, right? Everybody likes to make the argument, oh, it's expensive to eat this way or blah, blah, blah. Just consider the amount of time that it takes you to go to the doctor, to get these prescriptions, the amount of money. We've taken people off blood or uh, blood pressure medication, gotten their diabetes prescriptions cut way down, these types of things, right? The, the, this, these behaviors have real impacts on your life. We even took a girl that was um, seeing a uh, therapist for like three years for sleep deprivation, on melatonin, like all, all these different sleep aids and stuff like that. She was only getting like three to four hours of sleep a night and she fixed that with this, the, these behaviors that we're suggesting. All right, she's battled that for years. Um, it's in our highlight video, it's kind of cool. Um, but you gotta make a choice there. Um, I'm gonna skip over that. <clears throat> okay, so one other thing that um, we need to understand, this is the, the, one of the hard, the two things that are hardest to understand for me, everybody knows about protein, right? Protein, building block, makes sense, you gotta eat it. I don't wanna be big, I gotta eat it, I wanna be strong. Um, fats are kind of hard, right? Because there's good fats and shitty fats, and fat is to make you fat, or what? Like, um, fat is not bad for you. That that whole concept, right, is, is sometimes hard. But this is one that, I, and we'll touch on that a little bit. But this is one that I want to drill in. So the insulin response, right? So we have available to us at any point in time and day way more dirty or whether it be dirty or clean, quick sugary carbohydrates available to us than we did when we were coming up and um, still wearing like uh, animal skins and stuff, right? So we have all this stuff available to us now. It's too, it's too available. And those assholes that code put more salt and stuff so they can add more sugar and then makes you drink more of that, all those types of things are happening. So what we got ourselves into this type two diabetes epidemic is we are spiking our blood sugar levels so high that insulin has to respond and do something with all that fuel, right? And we're doing that so much and so often that insulin is basically like, fuck you, I'm tired of dealing with this, I'm out. And then you have type 2 diabetes, right? So that car curve, so there's all these, like the, the, the things that are out now, like Atkins came out and then paleo, some people talk about low carb versus high carb. That carb game is important, you have to understand where those carbs are coming from. But carbs are not bad if you're training like we train. Okay, carbs, carbs are not an enemy, but they are, you have to understand that they are raising your blood sugar levels and you have to be able to throttle them. Okay, all right, so that's a, another concept. Just keep that in your head. All right, so with this challenge, so some, these are some of the criteria in these challenges. There's a sleep component, all right? Um, we'll pop up that uh, challenge form in a little bit. But you cannot, your sleep is based on the sun, okay? It's dark now, our bodies are feeling a little sleepy, right? And all the time it starts to get produced. But if I stare at this screen, look, let all the blue light in, then my body's like, oh shit, it's still bright, I'm, I need to wake up, right? You gotta get yourself into a habit, and there's no argument about the time either. You need to let go of the electronic stuff by 9.30. By 10 o'clock, your brain is starting to get into its cycle of sleep, okay? It, while you're sleeping, from about 10 o'clock to two o'clock, that's your brain's window during the day to recover, all right? Your brain is like uh, your cell phone battery, kind of. It's always running, constantly running, electricity running through it all day long, right? If you do that through to your cell phone, eventually it dies. But it also gets like very hot, right, if you're operating that thing. So your brain doesn't have a way to really cool itself. It tends to cool and recover itself between that period of 10 and 2. All right, if you break into that 10 and 2 period, you're not giving your brain a chance to recover. If you're stretching into 11, 12 o'clock at night, you're missing that window. All right, your body recovers for that four hour period of time and then extra. So if you've done a lot of work or if, you're, if you were an Olympic athlete, you may need somewhere on the order of like 10 hours of sleep, 
right? If you're kind of sedentary, you probably don't need that much sleep, but you still need that four hour window, okay, for your, for your brain to recover. Your body might not need it, all right? So the body is where those additional hours come from. Um, next topic is hydration, all right? Number one reason for sleep deprivation is dehydration. All right, people like to stop drinking water before they go to bed. They think they're going to be up, going to the restroom, those kind of things. Yeah, that might happen. But what's interesting about this is, is if you're well hydrated before you go to bed, what you'll find, and you sleep on that rhythm that I'm suggesting, you will wake up somewhere around the 2 o'clock region. You might go to the bathroom at that time, and then you'll go back right back to sleep if you get into this sleep habit. It's because your brain has done, gone through that recovery period, and now you're going through um, your body's recovery period. But you cannot be afraid to hydrate before you sleep. When you wake up in the morning, okay, you, you drink some a solid amount of water, so you'll drink a full glass of water in the challenge before you go to bed. When you wake up in the morning, you need to hit that water again. You just went, hopefully, eight hours, maybe ten hours without drinking any water. It's an extended period of time. You need to hydrate immediately when you wake up. That should be the first thing that goes to your body. What you'll find, too, is if you can clean up some of these other markers and those acute um, symptoms that we have, if you can clean some of that up, you will find that when you drink that glass of water in the morning, it's going to feel better than coffee. You will immediately wake up. It's uh, Somebody gave me the analogy of where you know you pour water on a, um, a flowering plant or something like that, and then you turn around, and then you come back and the flower, or the plant looks like it's kind of like perking up a little bit. Your body does the same thing. Your brain needs that water, your body needs that water to operate. So start it off right. You start it off right in the morning, you have a better tendency to see when you're dehydrated later in the day. You, go, you drink that water in the morning, by 10 o'clock you're going to start to feel your eyes dry, maybe you're a little bit dragging a little bit. Hit that water and it will bring you back up. You'll feel a difference. All right. So you have these hydration points before you go to bed, when you wake up, those need to happen. And then during the day, based on your level of effort, your energy output, monitor your urine. Right? You need to be in that hydrated state. You need to be drinking plenty of water. That's the best way to do it. Okay? It's, it's very hard to kind of pick apart, I need so many glasses of water because, well, did you work out? Were you walking around at work? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it, is the humidity levels low? Those types of things. Just take a look at, I mean, everybody's looking down on their pee anyway. Right? <laughs> so, just take the pants. It's, it's not so, what, so what you're saying is if your pee is dark brown, consult a doctor. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know if this is. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I've never seen that. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Um, but hydration is important. You got. I mean, that's 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 cliche, right? We figured that stuff when we were kid. Movement um, during the challenge, you require or you will score better if you move throughout the day. All right, and moving like a human. CrossFit has done a good job or bringing about that vernacular and the reason, like, it's funny, people kind of bash the community, right, because they're like, oh, mobility is just stretching. Well, no, I mean, when people say stretching, they're thinking about lengthening muscles. When we're saying mobility, we're thinking about mobilizing joints, right? So just a little bit different spin on kind of the same concept. So um, spending time in your squat, working on um, shoulder uh, openers and things like that, 20 minutes of mobility every day will score you extra points in this challenge. The, some of the other things that we try to get you to do is move during the day, um, body movements during the day. We even had uh, people that were like, I think somebody was working in a law office and she would lunge to the bathroom and lunge back and everybody in the office would do it. <laughs> you know? So if you get like, imagine like, oh, like a string of cubicles and like a head going like that. And those, are those are the types of things that need to happen. Yeah. I have a question. Okay, so I'm a nursing assistant and I'm constantly like moving around all day. I'm on my feet, lifting people up, you know, stuff like that. But whenever, you know, if I ever do like an app, it's like, are you sedentary, or are you blah, 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 or are you this active? Like, I never know what to put in there, because I don't know what somebody would consider that. So, like, I so would say I move around a lot at work, but I wouldn't say I'm, like, physically, I am sweating, but I'm not, like, <sighs> you know, like, I'm not. I'm yeah. Just, so there's, there is criteria in here that you will score better if you're on your hour, your feet for six hours a day. So that's where I consider like those types of jobs where you're walking around, moving around, those mm -hmm. kind of things. They're not the movement points, they're not the body weight points, they're not considered exercise, um, but you are moving around, you're better off than 
people that are sitting all day and basically they're like right. dying as they sit. Okay. Right. You ever see those the article sitting is killing you? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Basic meal guidelines. Um, three meals a day, if you get into a nice rhythm, you shouldn't have to think about this too much. You're going to eat when you're hungry, right? Whether it's 11 o'clock, whether it's 1230, it just depends on the day and your rhythm, right? So three major meals. Um, your meals, you need to be, and you will find this in the, when you're logging your stuff, you need to know how many servings of protein you're getting. You need to know how many servings of fat you're getting. You need to know how many servings of, and the challenge breaks this down a lot, Vegetable-based carbs, starch-based carbs, natural sugar carbs from fruit, and things like that. All right, you need to understand those three components. Those are your macronutrients: proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Protein needs to be there all the time. Building blocks. Your hair's made of it. Your skin's made of it. Any other parts of your body are made of it. All right. Um, we'll get into serving sizes in just a little bit. Um, fat. This is a little bit of a hard one, but I think in this community we're, we're kind of starting to dial it in just a little bit, but avocados, olive oils, unprocessed oils, right? So vegetable oils, canola oils, those types of things, all out, don't even count them, not, not listed, do not look at them. Um, margarine spreads, all those things um, that uh, are appealing to your heart health and the marketing pitches. Well, ignore all that shit. Um, <laughs> coconut. Um, we like butter, like uh, grass-fed Kerrygold butter, we like that stuff. Um, and then where it gets based, where it gets more um, based on your, uh, in the challenge what you'll see is that carbohydrates based on vegetables are as many as you want, okay? Gotta be reaching for those vegetables, that nice nutrient dense carbohydrate source, all right? Fruits, starches, natural sugars, those types of things are allowed, but they're throttled based on your activity that you punch in, all right? So you'll, you'll see check boxes for, I did a CrossFit strength component, I did a um, CrossFit uh, conditioning component, I did an hour worth of cardio, we put that in there for people that aren't doing CrossFit type stuff. It, uh, Olympic weightlifting, those types of things. All right, but when you have a serving of those carbs, you need to have those activities to offset it. All right. So what that means is, is that you're if you're training hard and you're active on a particular day, your carbs will be higher, right, from those sources. Vegetables, again, carb lunch, but the other ones they can be higher when you're training. So if you if your goals are more athletic performance oriented, you can still do well. If your goals are if you're more of that, if you were considered a sedentary person, um, and you ate those vegetables and you went lower on your carbs on the fruits and starches, you'll, you'll do well. All right. If your goal in this challenge is to fix yourself, if you've been eating bad for a long time and you want to learn a shit ton about how your body reacts to things, then I highly suggest that you go high vegetables, leave out the fruits and starches. Okay, stay away from those carbs, even if you're training three days a week for this 45 day period, okay? Not a good idea to do it super long term, but if your goal is fat loss, if your goal is get into a rhythm where I, if you're, if you're feeling that like dragging energy during the day, if you're having those lulls, if you're feeling like shit at different points of the day, need a metabolic reset, right? And that's where we want, we really encourage that. I'm gonna eat protein, fat, vegetables, get into that state where your body is burning fat as its fuel. Okay, you will put, you will dissuade that if you add in those carbohydrates. But I want people to be able to pull from those carbohydrates if they're training hard and if their if performance is their goal. Does that make sense? That's kind of a tough concept, and you got to be strict on yourself to do that. If you go for the metabolic reset and you try to get into this extremely low carb state, you're going to have you're going to struggle two weeks in or so, right? You're going to hit these lows. Some people have it, some people don't. I don't know. I, don't, I haven't really pinned it down. Even people that I think like would have a pretty poor diet don't, don't go through that. But um, sometimes you can get into this like I hit this weird feeling, you can't think, 
your mouth tastes funny when you work out, you're just into this weird period, right? You gotta kind of suffer through that a little bit. But when you come out on the other side, you're gonna be clean and born again or something. <laughs> right? But you're, what you're doing is you're switching over to fats as your main fuel source instead of your body starving for those carbs. So your body's like, give me carbs, give me carbs, give me carbs, and it's like, I'm drowning, I'm dying, I'm dying, and you're gonna feel like you're dying, so you can't think. But then it, all of a sudden it's like, oh shit, look at all this fat I can burn. And then you're like, oh man, this is awesome. And everything comes up, you come out of that. All right? So it's, the, this state is called ketosis, especially if you're working out, you can actually taste a different taste in your mouth. It's kind of an auditive experience. All right? But you need to, it, it, if you want to really get something out of this challenge, strive, try to go find that. You can go find that state and you're going to figure a lot of shit out. Okay, snack guidelines, um, have food available. This takes a little bit of planning. It, I promise you though, if you work on it for 45 days and you don't reach for something quick or fast or <laughs> go out to eat or anything like that, you'll figure some ways to make this happen for you all the time. Um, one or two snacks a day, whatever you need. But a snack is basically uh, from the serving. So we talked about a serving of protein, a serving of vegetables. You, there's images about what serving is later on. Um, easy on the fruit and then a full serving of fat is a meal, a snack is just half of that. Okay, a snack is half the servings for that, that we're prescribing as a meal. All right, and then vegetables, again, they shouldn't even say one, it should be as many as you want. All right? Um, any questions on those meal guidelines? Somebody told me to eat 24 times a day, I gotta eat every hour on the hour. Yeah, you know, that. Okay, eat when you're hungry, that's it. Um, Standard American diet, sad, right? That's <laughs> breads, cereals, all the shit that you that we grew up here in, in the food pyramid. Wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, it's, there's like a conspiracy theory, you know, America is the biggest producer of grain, so why not drop that in there? It just makes economical sense. Who cares what we kill people? Um, but we want to get rid of that. So the food pyramid that we like. Vegetables, fruits on the bottom again, you gotta throttle these. Proteins, mish, or mish, meats, <laughs> fish, um, eggs, anything that had a solar face, I like that one. Um, so that does not include soy. Alright? If you're a, of the vegan persu persuasion, I can't help you. <laughs> um, nuts, seeds. Nut butters, approved fats and oils, and approved fats and oils are, are that list, right? I think we've got that list published in many places, so if you have questions about those, what is a good fat, what are the fats I should eat, you'll have a coach through this challenge, so you'll uh, be able to correspond with them. Um, and then <laughs> the other one, I forgot to point this out, but I always do, it has sweets in the top of it. <laughs> sweets is a food. It's not a food. Herbs, spices, <laughs> extracts. We have supplements in the top of our food pyramid, mostly because um, we like to prescribe those omega threes, right? The, the fish oils and cod liver oils and those types of things, whatever your, whatever your choice is. But we also really like D three, right? That's a hard thing for us to get in society today. We're mostly indoors, or the sun goes away, or it's cold. Um, D three is important to your immune system and your everyday function, so we love to supplement with that. All right. Okay, so back, back to what we were talking about. We already talked about con do consume meat, fruit, vegetables, and healthy fats, but you've got to consider the source here too, right? So grains and those sugars and that insulin response was kind of leading to that silent inflammation, but these sources, the chemicals that are mixed in are leading into that silent inflammation as well, right? There's um, something... Beth, you saw some article on Facebook, right, that was like, every kid is going to be autistic tomorrow or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's about, uh, 2025, one in five kids, they're guessing they're going to be autistic. Right. So, I mean, that's, I mean, that, that's somebody's prediction or whatever, and it's, you know, something out of the media. But these are the types of things that we're starting, it may be extreme, but these are the types of things that we're starting to discover because of the chemicals that we're putting in our food. You watch some of those documentaries about how food is processed, especially in the fast food industry. Washing ammonia, washing ground meat with ammonia just to make sure that salmonella doesn't get through the population. Right? You don't take, so, so consider, think about that, and then consider that the 
but you can turn me inside out. That's the biggest in interface to the world, right? All that stuff that's winding through there, I don't know, there's like four miles of intestine in there. All that stuff that's winding through there, that's my biggest interface to the world. That's, that's beyond my skin, beyond anything that I can interact with. That's your biggest interface, all right? So now if I brought a bucket of ammonia in here, or even just like a, like a dropper, and I said, just a little bit, let me see your eye, right? You wouldn't put that on your skin. You wouldn't put that ammonia on your eye. You wouldn't put it on your skin. So why the hell would you eat food that was washed in it? Just because somebody said it was safe somewhere, right? Ridiculous. You've got to consider the sources of these things. Um, you think about the fast food engine, their, their, their whole thing is lowest cost, biggest return, right? So how do you think they give they can give you a burger that big for a dollar? Or maybe it's not that big. They're kind of flat. In the commercial, they're like that. <laughs> <laughs> how do you think they can what kind of nutrient density is in that piece of shit, right? <laughs> it's garbage, right? They're filling it with a bunch of crap, they're processing it, they're washing it, who knows what's in there. Um, so consider that source. So grass-fed, grass-finished beef sources, um, organic, go organic on your fruits and your veggies, fresh-caught fish, always, never farmed. Okay? Um, and then that's, that's where we get into that conversation of like, man, it's expensive to eat this way. Yeah, but just think about what you're doing to yourself long term, right? It's like, it's like uh, swiping your credit card that might have like 15% on it and having cash in your pocket. You know, spend the money now and don't take the debt, right? All right. Okay. Do not consume grains, legumes, grains, legumes, dairy, processed foods and artificial sweeteners and alcohol. Ouch! <laughs> um, we'll get into those in a little bit more in a second. And then training. I don't have to go get into this that much with you guys, um, but we train the way that we train it here with resistance, high level of effort, full range of motion, functional, compound, all that shit, right? Because we want to look like that instead of like that. Cardio, long endurance, frail, skinny, that's awesome, they ran really far, my knees hurt. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, back, um, back to proteins. I'm not gonna get into proteins too much. We, everybody should be pretty good on protein, right? That's an easy one, what you got, John? Can you hit eggs though, just so I can like, whenever I go to the grocery and I see there's the regular ones and there's this one where they didn't eat antibiotics or some shit. This oh, one, man. you know, has omega threes in it. Like, yes. The um, <laughs> I don't know. We've got a really good infographic that we published. I just saw on. that and those reasons I kind of brought this up. Yeah, I don't have. I can't spit that off the top of my head. I'm, right. not, I'm not polished enough on that. That yet. Okay. I was going to ask about the the protein supplement. You know how everybody has the shakes. Mm -hmm. and, I'm very sensitive to proteins, mm -hmm. but I have found one called Incha Matcha, and just for everybody out there, it's like I can't eat pea protein, whey, none of it, but I, egg even bothers me, um, in a supplement form. Yeah. Incha Matcha, it's Boku is the name, we found it online, and really? it's, it's uh, 20 grams of protein, and my sister approved it. So. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Yeah, shoot that to us. We would like the. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, I'll get to it. But yeah, anything like that, we're gonna we'll have a way for everybody to share that information too as we go. Okay. Um, serving size, protein, size of the palm of your hand, thickness of the palm of your hand. All right. I'm glad I got thicker palm. Can I, I eat the size of his palm? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no trading palms. All right. Um, but that's a guide. That's a guidance. If you're feeling. Um, if you're, when you're, well, after a meal, if you're feeling kind of fuzzy in your head and like not quite right, so you're, maybe you're full and you're kind of fuzzy in your head, try increasing your protein a little bit. So you can, that, that's something that you can throttle. So fuzzy head, increase protein. All right. Um, carbohydrate, vegetables, I kind of beat that up a little bit already. Go crazy on the vegetables. Um, Try not to just eat broccoli for 45 days. <laughs> try different stuff. Try cooking different stuff. Um, 
We'll be publishing our, our re um, recipes and those kind of things to give you some ideas about the fresh. But vegetables, more please fill up your plate, as many as you can handle. Fruits, again, um, sparingly, especially if you're wanting to go through that metabolic reset. You can go crazy on the fruits and then you'll wind up kind of screwing that ketosis state that we were suggesting before where you go switch over to that fat burning mode. Okay, you don't, you will go, you could go through a point if you're kind of dependent on carbs right now, you could go through a point where you're, I need something sugary, I need something sweet, you just gotta get through that. And even though food, fruits are great, um, they fit the paleo litmus test, they were available, those kind of things, they will stifle that, breaking that addiction that you might have to carbohydrate. All right, so try to stay away from those, especially if weight loss is your goal, okay? Um, fruits, but that one serving, it, it should be just what can fit inside the palm of your hand. All right, so it's not a lot. A serving of fruit is not four bananas. <laughs> okay, fats. So this one gets a little tough. So before I said, if your head feels foggy after you eat, try increasing your protein. If you're still hungry after you eat, make sure that you're covering the fats in every meal, right? What we'll see in this challenge, Every time we do it, no matter how long I stay up here and like jump around and kick around about fats, man, I had all this chicken, I had all this vegetables. Where's your fats? Man, I had all this beef, I had like all this broccoli, and then I had I added some more protein. Where's your fat? You gotta get the fats in there, or else you will waste away and you'll struggle with this. All right. Once people start getting the fats, then they start enjoying their meals a little bit more. They're satiated and all that stuff. So make sure you have the fats in there. Avocado, olives, olive oil and avocados are like the coup de gras, right? Those are like your staple. You should have like olive oil, avocado, <laughs> and olive, right? Half an avocado, like just, if you don't know what to do in the beginning, just take a half an avocado with you everywhere. And you can spoon that thing, it's like an emergency full if the nutritionist eat it. Okay, avocado, coconut is also excellent. Um, coconut milk in your coffee, coconut fat, those kind of things, cook with it. Um, olive oil on your salad, very easy one, right? Make sure there's enough on there. Don't, um, we talk about serving of olive oil, about the volume of your thumb, or if you can't understand that, about a shot. <laughs> um, those are the fats, oh, nuts. So everybody's like, oh man, so with the biggest thing that we struggle with when we're switching to this type of diet is something crunchy, right? Something like the chomp on. And everybody goes, yes, nuts. And then they eat all kinds of nuts. They go nuts on the nuts, and then they're, you're, you're eating, when you eat the nuts, even though they follow in that paleo persuasion, you're going, you're leaning back towards the omega-6s that you don't want. There's a lot more omega-6s than there are omega-3s in those nuts. Um, they're dense in calories, right? So if your fat loss is your goal, you're forking that as well. Be easy on those. When you leave the house, <laughs> take the, what's the, um, leave the gun, take the cannoli, leave the nuts, take the avocado. That's a, we should make that shirt right there. That would be huge. Um, but those, just be easy on the nuts. Okay, it's an easy thing to kind of go reach for, but we got nuts on them. Okay, grains. This is why we don't eat the grains. So, beside the fact that they are really dense in carbohydrate, convert straight to sugar, and when you talk about the amount of carbohydrates packed in a single piece of bread, it's very nutrient deficient, but carbohydrate dense, okay, piece of bread. Same volume of broccoli, very nutrient dense, very carbohydrate deficient, okay? So, those, these, this is the type of difference. So, it's good from that dietary standpoint to make that distinction. So take the stack like three pieces of bread, stack the broccoli, go for the broccoli, all right? A lot more nutrients, a lot more good shit for your body, and it won't have all the sugars in it. Second thing though with the grains is that grains are pre-grown plants, right? Their whole purpose of those oats or those seeds or whatever they were is to go into the ground, protect the germ, yeah, protect that thing with these biological defenses that are in the outside. But what we're doing is we're taking that thing before it 
does its job. We're grinding it up, we're smashing it up, and we're making it into a tortilla, right? <laughs> but when we eat that, our body starts to break it down. We may not have a uh, severe immune response to it, like someone with a um, celiac, right, that gluten response. Might not have quite that, but still, those particles break down, and they get into your small intestine. They don't break down enough, and they start to they get down small enough that they can make it through your bowel. Right, so when it makes it through your bowel, now it's in your bloodstream, and your body goes into that inflammation mode. Holy shit, what is this? I'm gonna attack it, right? So now that's where that silent inflammation starts creeping up, right? And you, you have your, so what we do with our sad American diet is we sit down at our breakfast table with like our two and a half kids and our wife, and we have a glass of orange juice, oatmeal, bread, Special K, heart healthy, really clean white box, nice red label. <laughs> it looks awesome. There's that turkey on the front or something, whatever. It is. <laughs> but that, that's the American diet, right? This is what we're prescribed. Maybe some banana, bananas in there too. What did you just consume, right? That orange juice that you picked up at the store has got like a shit ton of oranges in that big glass, right? I don't care if, you know, oranges are paleo, great. Well, you don't pack a bunch. You would never consume eight dozen oranges, right, in your big glass, the big gulp glass that you got. Even though that guy, like, reached into the freezer and got <laughs> it, 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 it's so pure. <laughs> but the, uh, that, that, that's way too much sugar, right? Bananas, way too much sugar. Grain-based Kellogg, Special K, heart healthy deal, way too much, breaks down as sugar. Um, what else did I say? Oats. Breaks down as sugar and, oh, by the way, it was made from grains and it's going to inflame you. So you just threw your silent inflammation through the roof and you just threw your blood sugar through the roof and insulin's freaking out. American. Right? So that's what we're staying away from for the grains. Um, legumes kind of follow the same premise. Um, anything with a pot or a seed. Legumes get a little bit dicey, but we try to stay away from peanuts, soy, any type of beans, black, pinto, any of those kind of things. Um, when we talk about things like green beans, this is where it gets edgy, right? Green bean has a nice, healthy sheath around those little beans. The benefits of a green bean are way better than the negatives of a green bean. So there's like this gray legume area. But they have the same premise. If you're eating a bunch of edamame or something like that, it has that same biological response, causes you all right, so just leave them alone. Beans too, if um, fat loss is your goal, that's not, it's gonna afford you a little bit, all right? Um, dairy, we stay away from dairy. Dairy is one of the things that, like personally, that I found I was pretty intolerant of when I removed it, but drank it all my life, right? I, I cannot handle any, like, off-the-shelf grocery milk anymore. But I've experimented with reintroducing cheeses and recently go milk, much the best this May, which is awesome, by the way. Yeah. Um, but uh, the reason we shy away from dairy, and the way you should, you should try to cut it out, try to give yourself 45 days without it, and then reintroduce it, it those different persuasions, a little bit at a time, take them back out, and just kind of things experiment. But the reason we stay away from dairy is, um, it's, it's a little bit odd that we're mammals, we're the only mammals that consume dairy after we're weaned, and we're the only mammals that go consume dairy from another species. Right? Um, everybody's a little bit lactose intolerant. You may find that when you remove it, you add it back in, it blows you up. All right, so just experiment with that. The other thing that would, that dairy, you gotta be cautious of, if you do reintroduce it, you gotta go for really clean sources. Because the same reason that we stay away from the processed beef, because those cows, so everybody understands what happens when cheap beef goes to slaughter, right? Calf is born, we gotta get that thing as fat and to market as fast as possible. Steroids, grains, yes, corn. They, though, cows are not made to. They're ruminoids, right? They're not made to consume grains. They're made to consume grass, grass, grass. grass. right? Green so we jam them full of grains, jam them full of, full of steroids. This thing, by the time it's, I think it take, used to take like eight years for a steer to get to market. Now it's down to like two. This thing is a beast by the time it's two, and then. It's like two and a half, and it can barely walk. It's crumbling. It's sick. Hormones, hormones, hormones. We're gonna keep this thing alive just long enough until it, until it gets to slaughter. 
That's what they're doing to our beef, right? Unless you know where it comes from. So, but, oh, by the way, we mark, we're probably gonna do that same thing to dairy cows, but we're gonna just take the milk out. Right, so that, all those hormones, those things that that dairy cow was injected with is now in the milk. Right, and so we, that's why we, that's one of the main reasons to stay away from dairy. Cool, dairy does not, calcium, bone density, all that stuff, dairy as it's processed is more acidic and will leach more calcium out of your bones than it will put in. Broccoli. Hey, huh? Broccoli's the best. Broccoli's absolutely the best, you're right. D3 as well, it's how to say, we're gonna put D3 in your milk, right? Now just go get a D3 supplement or get some natural sunlight. There's no reason to get it from uh, the milk. If you're consuming the right amount of vegetables, you're consuming a lot of vegetables, all the marketing pitch. And then, again, think about where the information is coming from. That's a marketing pitch, right? That's all it is. Consider the source, all right? So you don't need the milk for those types of reasons. Um, Sugars, those are pretty straightforward. Um, do, there are a lot of good sources of um, natural sweeteners, maple syrup, honey, um, agave, those types of things. And you'll see um, when we get into the logging and stuff like that, the sugars are allowed. But again, you need to be trained. And then again, even if you're training and you balance is your goal, I'd stay away from these. All right. Alcohol, sorry, I don't, I mean, there's really like, there's a bunch of stuff we can read about this, but there's really, well, it's not good, it's right? It's depressing, it's packed. Yeah, it's, it's depressing. <laughs> we, we, we do, there, there is a sliding scale of alcohol that'll kill you in the number two. <laughs> so, the first drink, and this, so what we're saying is that red wine, tequila, white um, alcohols, those things that, uh, like the, don't have the glutens or grains or those kind of things in it. Um, we're saying that one of those is going to be kind of a hit. The second one, it's like a logarithmic scale. 10 points for the first one, 40 points for the second one. Okay. Something like Ooh. 100 <laughs> points for the third one, 120 points for the fourth one. What about so like beer? So beer's gonna, yeah, the beer's going to crush you. That needs to log, that needs to log out of the um, Processed food and it's 25 a piece. Wow. Yeah. So, the, so what, what what we find is that that the alcohol will thwart you, right? If you want good results in this thing, you got to follow that back. It it well, just by basic observation, we figured every drink or binge drinking type of thing sets you back about four or five days. All right, from whatever goals you have. So you got to follow that if you want the results that you can get out of this stuff. Um, the, one other thing, so processed foods, anything that comes in a box, right? Anything that doesn't look like food when you pick it up um, is going to have a label on it. You've got to know how to read these labels. So you can eat things that come in boxes or cans, like coconut milk or something like that, right? But you've got to flip over the label and you've got to look at it. And I just yelled at my buddy the other day because he's been here for like two years and he's done like two of these challenges. And he picks this thing up and he starts looking at, I don't know what it was, really. But he picks it up and he starts look, reading me the fat calories and the carbohydrates. I'm like, I didn't teach you how to read labels yet, man. Read this shit right here to me and tell me if, it, if that's natural stuff, whatever's in there, all right? So this example has a bunch of crap in here, a bunch of stuff that I can't pronounce. If it reads like tomatoes, garlic, onions, even better, organic tomatoes, organic onions, garlic, right? If it reads like that, it's a pasta sauce, great. Pick up that pasta sauce, pick up the pasta sauce next to it, then start looking at the sodium numbers. If everyone has the lower sodium content, get that one, stay away from the sodium, right? Read this first. All this shit is a bunch of ancillary stuff that you don't have to worry about. You get lost in the numbers here. Stick to what reads like real food. Cool? Um, okay, so this challenge, the details on this. 45 days, um, Register at, if you go to challenge.ironbridge.us, you can register there. There's an app that, and we'll send you instructions if you, and you register. If you've already, already registered, you'll receive your instructions to go log into the app very shortly. Um, you'll go in there, you'll create an account. We'll assign you to a coach. We'll assign you to a team. You will be accountable to your team. Your coach will monitor your progress. 
You also have access to a blog within that application that you can see posts that will repost from sources like uh, uh, Paleo OMG, which has a lot of good recipes. Where the, the coaching team, myself, Andrea, Beth, and Rob Bach, um, we're going to monitor, we're going to scour these posts, pick the best ones, the ones that we think are legit. We posted some of our own recipes. We posted some of our own articles. You'll have that feed. You can comment on that. And we'll have a correspondence there. But everybody will have access to that. Your team, will, you'll be accountable to your team, and then the coach will check up on you based on your daily scores, and they can send you emails based on the logs that you that you put in there with suggestions on what you're eating. Okay. Um, next week, we will do test workouts. There are CrossFit test workouts, and there are non-CrossFit test workouts. Non-CrossFit test workouts have the instructional video with how the stuff should be performed on that page that I said before, um, where you go to challenge.ironbridge.us. Uh, there are nothing out of the ordinary, push-ups, sit-ups, 800 meter run, those kind of things on a time clock. You're going to test in, you're going to test out at the end. All right. When you perform these tests, you need to perform them the same way on the way out as you did on the way in. So if you're feeling a little bit weak on the way in, but you want to add weight later, don't do it. Just test with the same weight as you had on the bar and figure out if you did better or not. You got to have the same kind of setup. CrossFit test wads are DT, Cindy, and a one mile run. Those will be done over the course of next week and they need to be in by the end of next week. What All are right? the first things you just said? What's that? Do you think there's certain Yeah, there's certain um, workouts. Um, but those are cool ones. We like, to, we like to do a heavy one in there, one that's um, endurance based, and then one that's body weight based. So that's a nice rep. Um, oh, and we'll do body weight, body measurements. So you can either do these on your own. Um, oh, I don't know if the thing in the app yet that shows you the picture. But you're going to measure. Um, different parts of your body, get your measurements, really encourage you to take a picture, okay? Yeah. We put body weight in there, um, we put those measurements in there, but... Is no, everyone going to see it? <laughs> no, everyone will not okay, see it. Okay, um, the, uh, We put the measurements in there, but if you have me measure you out the first time, then you have Beth measure you on the way out, it might be a little bit off. If you gained a little bit of abs in there, you might be a little bit off, you gain a little bit of quad, those, those numbers can throw you, right? So don't harp on those numbers, don't harp on your weight. If you drink a bunch of water before you weighed in, you know, you're going to add some weight, that kind of thing. Take a picture. If you look better towards the end, then you did something right. Okay, it's that easy. Pictures are the best evidence aside from like a really detailed um, body fat percentage measurement. Okay. Um, I think I mentioned most of this stuff. Oh, we, when you get assigned to your team, um, oh, your days will be scored. So there's a bunch of criteria, and I try to like make the scoring a little bit uh, obfuscated. The right word, you can't see it. Mm -hmm. um, I try to make it a little bit like that, so you don't associate the food to the points. You'll be very clear on what are good behaviors and what are bad behaviors. But I don't want you kind of like picking apart and saying, "I'm going to do these things because I'm going to give you the most points." Yeah, it's not the point. We want to, you want to honestly mark your behaviors. You're only lying to yourself if you don't. But honestly mark your behaviors and, and do that, right? Make, this is, commit to yourself for 45 days and be honest with myself. It's, it's only for you, right? The prizes and that team stuff is just the fun part. But the real thing is like what you've done day to day, right? Um, so the day, your day is worth like 100 points. Like that, it winds up being a percentage of the points that you scored versus the points that are available. And then we detract points from the behaviors that are negative. Um, four pain wads throughout the challenge. So I think there's one break week where we might do a little bit of a mobility seminar in there. Um, but we'll try to get together with your team on Thursdays to do those pain wads together. If you're not a CrossFitter, you're more than welcome to attend those. Um, we'll have options for you if you're not used to the movements. No problem. All right, but we'd like you get more points with your team if y'all come. All right. Um, there'll also be team gatherings that you guys will self-organize. So we'd love to have you get together. There's a uh, bridge runs, um, y'all went out for like meals and stuff like that. And go. A good challenge is to get your team together and go out to a restaurant and try to eat paleo at a restaurant. Right. That's a. It's an easy thing to do. You got to be a little bit of a pain in the ass. We just got to be prepared to do it. 
Um, that's kind of cool. Uh, we had some beach work. I mean, there's a ton of different things you can do. Anything that you can do that's fitness or meal oriented, you get together as a team. Hey, little potlucks, right? That was, a, that was another thing, okay? Um, but you'll get points, your team will acquire points for those. There will also be, during those pain wads and different points, we have some, I didn't pull them out, we have these immunity idols. So if you can have immunity idols, you can trade those in, your team can decide to trade those in for points or to get out of pain wads and those types of things. All right, and pain wads, example, uh, we did the, uh, one time we did the um, 100 Curtis P's for time, that was fun. We did uh, the burden on beat test, which is interesting, which is just a bunch of thrusters and pull-ups and it, like it's an ascending scale. There's What's a lot of burpees? What do you call that? That's my. Hell. <laughs> I do not want to do that. No, that I, would be my I don't enjoy those. No, um, <laughs> if you're not a CrossFitter, um, we're going to let you come to our 5.30 classes, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, and you work with me. That's part of our on-ramp program. You can do those classes um, with those new folks. Uh, it's going to be a lot of coaching, but you get a, a taste of the CrossFit workouts. Um, there will be a drop-in fee for those, and they'll just be $10 instead of our $20 deal. Um, Paying wad attendance, though, with your team, for those folks that are members of the gym, is free when you on those Thursdays. Um, but if you work out in some other area, like I said before, you can still score those points that you need to with workouts that you do outside of the gym in your own whatever respective garages or anything like that. Um, final scoring, we still have to uh, announce our prizes, but we'll do a wrap-up event on March 6th. We'll all provide some food and beverages and kind of hang out like this and that kind of thing and talk about uh, people's successes over it. Uh, what, the way the scoring works is that the top 10 athletes in the behavior log will be evaluated based on their performance and their body weight measurements. Okay, And then you'll score points for each one of those categories. So we, we take a cut of the top 10 and then we look at the different metrics and then they rank you places. So then your your total behavior points count as a third, your score, your performance improvement counts as a third, and your body metrics count as a third. So what we'll typically see is some people do really well on their body metrics, but maybe they don't have performance improvements. Some people have crazy performance improvements, but their body doesn't change that much. Right? So we want to make it very fair, but you have to make that, you have to do the daily grind to make it into that category. All right. Um, yes, that's it. The team score is very heavily dependent on the average score of your team. So if someone shits the bed and doesn't log, you need to be on them because they're sucking your average down. All right. I think that's it. That is. All right. Can you get back to that picture of the fat and like? Oh, that one I skipped over? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty interesting little thing. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so that's, their, your organs all swollen up, or that's fat? This is all fat. visceral fat around your organs. This is the stuff that kills you. So um, where's your organ? It's all in there. It's just covered. This is the same person. Your organs get fat, too. Mm -hmm. right, same fat, person. The yellow fat, like, gets... You don't watch Dr. Oscar. Oh, <laughs> don't watch that guy. I hate that guy. Well, I, I hate that guy. Do not watch Dr. Oscar. Don't give a story on who is Dr. Oscar. I think I actually, I think uh, one of our coaches actually ordered me a I love Dr. Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, I, I even tweeted today that I love Dr. Oscar. Yeah. 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 Even tweeted today that Dr. Delson taught me things Dr. Oz is just now talking about. So. I'm sure he's talking about a lot of shit. But I like <laughs> <laughs> well, so here's here's a really interesting thing. So like that, it's really easy. Your eye goes to like the fat and stuff like that, right? But look at the look at the around the heart, right? Look at the size of the heart. Look at the fatty deposits in the brain, right? Look at the angle of the shoulder and the bones in their arm, right? Is that the same person? Same person. Lost a bunch of weight. It's like this, right? What if you walked around like this all day? What kind of a shoulder impingement do you think you give yourself if you walk around like that all day? Look at the angle of the top of the femur, right? So we talk about, we always talk about like being stacked. We talk about a handstand position, right? Being stacked, all your joints stacked 
over top, hollow position, those kind of things. I think you can achieve a hollow position when your femurs are like twisted out because of that, that fat that's all in there and the weight that's supporting. Look at the gaps in the, the knee right here, right? Very, very closed, nice and open, breathable, right? Big difference. And that's before and after. It's not the other way around. This was before, that's after. So significant difference in structural changes and things that, you know, a lot of people be like, yeah, man, I can live with a bunch of fat around there. Maybe it doesn't keep, but you look at that heart. Holy shit, that's, that's scary, right? That thing needs to beat all the time. But the, um, one of the interesting stories with last challenge that we ran out of here with a, a physician's practice, one of the women said that, and I don't know, I can relate, but she said some, something with like the way her pelvis when she was having kids and stuff like that, the way she felt that adjust, she felt it like unadjust. She was a big uh, heavy cell lady. She had, she lost a lot of weight. She was walking through the grocery store and she said, she said, my knees were like, pow, pow. And, like, what? and then she's like, my hips were like, crack, crack. And then, but then she was like, holy shit, I can move. Like, so something adjusted. And then she was, even um, in a separate conversation, the guy that runs the practice was like, she used to get out of a chair like that. Oh. And so like at the end of this thing, she's like, she sits up, she stands up out of the chair, right? It's a huge difference for this lady that, I mean, I can't even explain that. That's, that's, that's weird, you know, different stuff. We also had that group do uh, blood marker tests and they had some crazy cool results uh, with their blood markers too. Um, but yeah, that one was pretty impactful depending on where you come from. That, uh, that one brings all right. I think I talked enough. What's up, John? Can you talk to me about Saul? Because you, I, oh. like, I know just from going through it last time, like that ate me alive a couple of times. Yeah. So the Saul points that, as far as the penalty is concerned, it's not super, super high. But we are trying to get you to steer away from Saul. So this is where we go from. Saul is not a bad thing, but it will pertain to water. It will make you feel a little rusty if you have a bunch of it.